The materials that surround us are so often overlooked and underestimated, but in many ways they define what's possible using science and engineering. Here are my top three predictions for materials that we'll see in common use in 20 years time. The first is aerogels. Now aerogels are 99.8% air, they're the lightest solid known to man. And they're actually used at the moment by NASA for rather magically catching stardust. But researchers at Penn State University have found other applications for it, and this is why I think it will become more commonplace. They found that it's, it's hydrophobic, so it repels water, but it absorbs oil and it can hold up to 100 times its own weight in oil. So I think that it will be used in oil slicks and in the event of disasters where there's oil on, on, on the sea to absorb up that, uh, that excess oil. The second material that I see coming into more common use is self-healing concrete. Now this, if you think about it, sounds a bit dull, but half the buildings and structures in the world are made using concrete. So those require maintenance, those form cracks, and that's a real problem. The solution comes from an unlikely source. It's actually a, a bacteria that is found growing in the thermal vents of highly alkaline lakes. And this odd bacteria actually excretes calcite which is a type of mineral which is a constituent part of concrete. And the solution for self-healing concrete is to suspend this bacteria along with a starch solution in your concrete. And then what happens if a crack forms is water will get into the crack and it will awaken the bacteria which will then start to feed on the starch and it'll excrete the calcite which then bonds to the cement, the concrete and it heals the crack. So buildings in the future may well be able to maintain themselves. The daddy of all wonder materials is graphene. And I'm sure you've heard about this in the press. And famously, it was Andrzej Geim and Kostya Novozolov that, that isolated the material. And they did it using a pencil, a sheet of paper, and a, a piece of tape. So remarkably, they laid down a, a graphite surface. And then they stuck some tape to it. They peeled it off and they got a thin layer of, of graphene, graphite. And then they repeated the process over and over again until they were left with a, a single layer of graphite, which they defined as graphene. So it looks a bit like, if you can imagine, kind of chi atomic chicken wire with at its corners a, a carbon atom, that's graphene. And if you consider also that under the noses of millions of children for decades were the means of, uh, of isolating graphene, you know, they could have won a Nobel Prize, but they didn't bother. They're, you know, lazy, these lazy kids. They, they didn't actually win the Nobel Prize for the, the pencil trick, however. They won it for I, identifying the properties of graphene. And these are, are rather impressive, rather incredible. It's the lightest, it's the stiffest, and it's the strongest material known to man. And it also conducts electricity faster and with less resistance than any other material. And it does this using a rather interesting quantum effect called Klein tunneling, which means that electrons can flow almost at the speed of light through the material. And it's for these reasons that it looks like it will replace things like silicon chips, and because of its transparency and electrical conductivity, it may well replace and define touch greens in the future. So for these reasons, it will probably be the material that most defines our future. If you'd like to subscribe to any of the other head squeeze, channels and uh, information and videos, then just press the subscribe button.